Uh, this comes to us from Twitter X. It's from Vera Dark. Uh, shout out. The thing is that uh, Vera actually saw my um, my rope video. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she saw my rope video. And I believe she was on uh, Geeks and Gamers uh, Daily and she saw she saw it. So, uh, yep. Uh, anyways, while it says, uh, while I do not uh, usually speak on insider information or receive, I think this is one we all have pieced together ourselves. Warner Brothers is internally talking about closing Rocksteady or having halving uh, their 250 employees after Suicide Squad because of Justice League's bomb. Uh, just last month, David Zaslav announced that it lost them $200 million. Holy shit. It's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. That's insane. I've heavily covered the Warner Brothers games and Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League since the release because of what it represented for Warner Brothers games and a beloved franchise. When it was greenlit, we were seeing a giant scramble for studios to create live surface games. And this one released too late Plus, the content did not resonate with players. Uh, Rocksteady Studios co-founder and studio heads also departed the company back in 2022. Rocksteady is a shell of a company they used to be, and we saw this happen recently with Embracer Group and Volition, a company that had 30 years of experience under their belt, and it sounds as though Warner Brothers is planning to pull the plug on Rocksteady 2. They have no other games publicly announced, and there does not seem to be any confidence in them anymore. Even back in 2016, we got the Batman Arkham VR game that was developed by Rocksteady, and the new Batman Arkham Shadow VR game is being done by Camouflage. Only time will tell. Doesn't seem like the future is very bright for Rocksteady. And in the Summer Games Fest, they also showed off a new Batman VR game. I'm not sure if yeah, that's I the see same one. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I'm not sure either, but that's not going to save them. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Uh, now, here's the thing, though. This also furthers with Forbes. Report Suicide Squad kills the Justice League dev knew it was all going wrong. Abs if it was, absolutely. If it, if it was, if you knew that it was going wrong, why didn't you try to fix it? It's probably mandated by the... I don't blame them, honestly. I blame more like David Zaslav and the executives. Like, no, you got to do live service because we can, we're going to make so much money from live service. And if you're a dev, you can't really say... You don't. You can't say shit. It's like, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it's like, I know some people's take, like, I know Asmongold's take on Redfall reasons. Like, he partly blames the developers. Like, uh, for me, honestly, nah. It's like, even though if you're like a high position developer in the company, it's like, at the end of the day, it's still the... You still adhere to the business executives and the shareholders if they really want to push live service. You can't really do shit about it. So that's yeah. probably what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now the thing is, I blame the developers for going with Sweet Baby because they they rightfully went with that company to do their oh is is this you know woke enough is this this and then they're like oh let us change some stuff right but the thing is that yeah. they owe themselves so you sort of have to blame they're both to blame in my opinion yeah yeah i'm not saying the devs are completely clean but it's just that yeah your game already sucks then you sp you spent consultancy dollars with these fake consultants so you made it even worse like everything that could have gone wrong you act you guys actually did it how not to make yeah. develop a video game <laughs> you basically followed the handbook yeah the official jason uh schreier that's how you say it about the failure of yet another live surface game is out. The time focused uh, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League, which I would argue has been the worst disaster of them all. Rocks as a live service superhero shooter debuted to horrible review scores, peaked at half Marvel's Avengers concurrent highs, and now event averages under 500 players a night on Steam. I actually want to see uh, yeah, let's take a look. Steam charts for it. Steam chart. Uh, spring. Nope, that's uh Steam charts. Okay. <laughs> oh god. Oh man. To be, to be honest, man, I feel bad for like the the actual like people who work on the game that are like artists that that have nothing to do with yeah, the narrative. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're legit hardworking people for every game. It's just that it's ruined by terrible higher ups and decision making. Yeah, it's like yeah. if I were Warner Brothers at this point, I would sell the game for like five bucks. At least try to generate <laughs> generate additional sales. Just because of the price, it's super low already. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Let's see. Uh that that's really bad, dude. It's like, I hate to say it, but it's pretty obvious. And what it seems to always be happening with this sort of thing, bad management making bad decisions, and that badness being known by the devs themselves as they were making it, but it just couldn't course correct. I absolutely recommend that you read the entire piece. But what struck me the most is just how much the on the ground dev Jason talked to new. Uh, this was going to happen from uh, to some extent as baffling decisions kept being made and the devs kept asking themselves the same questions fans were. Rocksteady hired people without telling them they were working on a live multiplayer game. And those hires questioned Ooh. why exactly the studios was departing from its single player roots. Many devs left as a result. Staff wondered out loud why the game had transitioned away from Mostly melee combat, asking the famous, why does Captain Boomerang shoot guns? Why does he shoot guns? Oh my Everyone god. Everyone has dude. to shoot guns in the game. Even the new joke, even the new Joker DLC has Joker with a gun. Like it, it, it could have had any other more creative weapons that's more appropriate to Joker, but he also has a gun. Yeah, it's it's sort of like oh, dead shot. We're gonna you're, you're, you're gonna use a stick. <laughs> you're gonna use you're gonna use a stick to kill people. But I'm good with guns. Yeah, but you're gonna use a stick. <laughs> At one point, there was an elaborate vehicle system where you could upgrade cars and bikes for traversal. But devs wondered why that existed because all characters had city bounding traversal mechanics already. The piece said it was scrapped, uh, but it did uh, live on a little bit in the form of odd missions with flying uh, rocket firing cars that serve no real purpose. An entire support squad member at the home base Gizmo was devoted to the car concept despite them having close to no part in the game. Rocksteady leadership scrapped large chunks of the script, which seems obvious in the final product, and the studio co-founder, Stefton Hill, admitted he, didn't played, uh, he hadn't played much Destiny. Uh, the clear leader in the live space that has spent close to a decade learning how to avoid the pitfalls in the genre. Sorry, of the genre. Hill, along with his co-founder, uh, Jamie Walker, left the studio before Suicide Squad was finished. And Dave just announced they're making, you guessed, a single-player game this time for Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a win for Xbox. I think Microsoft really needs it. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it it sucks that it's people down below suffering from the terrible decisions of upper management. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, I don't I, think I'm... Destiny is a good business model either. I know they've been they've been uh they haven't been doing that well either. I I know we just talked about Bungie several months ago that they're not doing so hot, but anyway, yeah, yeah. live service is just too saturated already. People, they should go back to making smaller scale games. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.